In this mini lesson, we're gonna discuss a type of fixed income investment known as a bond. Specifically, we're gonna cover what a bond is, analyze a simplified bond certificate, and finally go over some of the things that can impact the market value of an existing bond. Now take note, in this video, I'm referring to something called marketable bonds, which are bonds that can be traded among investors in the marketplace, much like stocks do. There's another type of investment known as a Canada Savings Bond, which is issued by the government and is not a marketable bond, as it cannot be traded among investors and can only be redeemed by the government. Even though these are no longer being sold as of 2017, there are still many of them held by investors at the time we're shooting this video, so it's very important that you don't confuse the two. A marketable bond is nothing more than a loan. In fact, it's also referred to as a debt security because the bond issuer, which could be a corporation or government, is borrowing a certain amount of money and agrees to pay a certain interest rate during the life of the loan and pay back the principal by the time the loan matures. For example, suppose Small Fry Incorporated issued a $10,000 face value bond. In layman's terms, it borrowed money and the bond certificate is evidence of that loan. On the other side of the transaction, the investor loaned money to Small Fry Inc. in exchange for a stated interest rate, which is usually a fixed rate. For greater clarity, let's analyze a simplified example of the bond certificate. The issuer of the bond is Small Fry Inc. In other words, Small Fry board money. The face value of the bond is $10,000. This is the amount of the loan. And just like with any other loan, Small Fry would have to pay interest on that amount along with the principal back at maturity. The coupon rate is a fancy name for interest rate. The term came from the fact that historically, the bondholder would actually tear off a little coupon from the bond on an interest payment date and cash it in like a check. Today, most bonds pay interest semi-annually, which is every six months, and is now typically paid electronically. The difference between the bond's issue date and the maturity date is the bond's initial term. Be careful though, if a bond was initially issued as a 10-year bond, in one year, it would be referred to as a nine-year bond. In two years, it will be an eight-year bond, and so on. Most students are already aware that equities, such as the common shares of companies, trade in the stock market. Well, much like equities, after a bond is issued, it can be traded among investors in the bond market. If a $10,000 face value bond has a market value of exactly $10,000, we would say it's trading at par. If a $10,000 face value bond has a market value of more than $10,000, we would say it's trading at a premium. And if a $10,000 face value bond has a market value of less than $10,000, we would say it's trading at a discount. Now you may be wondering, what would cause the market value of a bond to change? The two main factors are the issuer's creditworthiness and the attractiveness of the bond's features compared to otherwise similar bonds. Now, as you can imagine, the creditworthiness of the issuer can have a significant impact on the market value of a bond. Let me exaggerate. If you own a bond where the issuer is bankrupt, with no hope of paying its debts, it's worthless. It's just a pretty piece of paper. The issuer is unable to pay you, and you'd be hard pressed to find someone willing to buy the bond from you. The creditworthiness of the bond's issuer is always an important consideration, regardless of the bond's other features. Fortunately, there are bond rating companies that evaluate the risk of bonds and assign them a rating. Government bonds generally have the highest or best credit rating due to the government's power of taxation. Let's face it, if the government needs money, it can just raise taxes. Of course, many large corporations have very high credit ratings as well. The attractiveness of the bond's features, such as its coupon rate, compared to other similar term bonds can also impact its market value. For example, a general market principle attributed to fixed income investments is as follows. All else being equal, the market value of the fixed income security will have an inverse relationship with interest rates. In other words, if interest rates increase, it will put downward pressure on the market value of existing bonds and vice versa. This can be confusing, so let's go over an example together. 
Suppose you own a bond with the following features. A $10,000 face value, a 5% coupon rate. It was initially a 10-year bond, but that was two years ago, and therefore this bond has a remaining term to maturity of eight years. One of the learning techniques we use at CY Learning is to exaggerate in order to make a concept easier to see. I'm certainly gonna do that here. On the screen, you will see the details of your bond, which is eight years left to maturity, and a brand new eight-year bond with a similar credit rating being issued today. Recall that your bond has a 5% coupon rate and has eight years remaining to maturity. What if the new eight-year bond is being issued with a 20% coupon rate? Now, obviously, I'm exaggerating big time here. With that in mind, though, I don't think too many investors would be interested in your bond. They would prefer to buy the brand new 20% coupon rate bond being issued at par. The only way they would want to buy your bond is if you sold it to them at a discount. Let's recap what happened here. Since your bond was issued with a 5% coupon rate, interest rates have obviously increased. The fixed coupon rate of your bond is now comparatively inferior to newer bonds being issued with an equivalent remaining term. This has caused the market value of your bond to fall. Keep in mind the risk-reward relationship though, because that applies here too. There is potential risk, but there is also potential reward. If interest rates increase, the market value of your fixed income investment would likely fall. However, the reverse also holds true. If instead interest rates decrease to say 2%, your 5% coupon rate bond would be comparatively more attractive and would likely trade at a premium.